Sorry. Okay, we are live. <laughs> Coming to you from beautiful City Hall in Deltona. This is the Planning and Zoning Board meeting of uh, Wednesday, August 17th, 2022. It is six o'clock. We have one item on our agenda to, on, under new business, but we will start with the call to order and the roll call, please. Member Alexander. Here. Member Burke. Present. Member Munoz. Present. Member Pfeffer. Present. Member Strozik. Here. Me um, I'm sorry, Vice, Vice Chair Strozik. I'm still here. Uh, <laughs> um, Chair Northy. Here. Um, Alternate Rodriguez. Here. Okay, Alternate Rodriguez is here. Okay, let me, <laughs> got new glasses. These are hard to get used to. Okay. Um, so, uh, just for the record, I believe that we need to put into the record that we have an opening here. Uh, uh, for, um, former member Jesse Gonzalez is not on the board and we need to report that to the uh, commission. So I will understand that that will be ha happening by the staff. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll do approval of minutes and the agenda for the minutes of July 20th. Those were when we were here with our with the school district getting educated on uh, school district issues. Uh, did everybody get a chance to read those minutes? Okay, if there's no, no changes or, or comments to them, we'll file them as written. Um, I do have one question for you, Mr. Paradise. I know that we are required to have so many hours of, of education. <clears throat> How many hours did that credit this each member with? Three. Three, okay, and we have how many that we are due to do? I'd have to do the accounting. I'm sorry, I don't have that, th okay. that information okay. in front of me. Okay. Is it six? Okay, all right, so we're in good shape. And that's calendar year, correct? Uh, I believe that's the way the ordinance read, yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, okay. Okay, so are there presentations, awards, and reports? There are none. Uh, public forum, do we have anybody for public forum? tonight? Okay, can we have them come forward? No. Oh, no, sorry. No. Nobody? Okay. No, she said no, sorry. Oh, okay, all right, there is no public <coughs> forum. There is no old business. We will move directly to new business. This is a quasi-judicial hearing, um, and I know that our attorney will swear us in at the appropriate time and those that are speaking as well. Ron? Yeah, and, and, and then then I'll turn the floor over to you. Are, are we ready, Madam Chair? Yes, we are. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ron Paradise, City of Deltona, uh, Community Services for the Record. Ordinance number 17-2022 is request rezone 5.3 acres of land within the City Activity Center from Agriculture and A1 to Business Plan Unit Development. Uh, this is a quasi-judicial hearing. In just a minute, I'm gonna turn the floor over to City Attorney uh, Marshall Siegel George uh, for swearing in and ex parte communication disclosure and whatever other nuances of ex parte that we need to discuss. Before the attorney starts, please note when you all vote at the conclusion of this hearing to please provide a rationale and be reminded your vote uh, will be or should be predicated on substantial and competent evidence. Uh, Madam Attorney. <clears throat> okay, first, for the, anyone who wishes to speak this evening, if you will raise your right hand and stand and, and be sworn in. And if you folks in the back, do you plan on speaking on any of this? Do you swear that the evidence that you're going to offer to the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, this evening is the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, then if you will ask your board um, <coughs> to answer with regards to any ex parte communications they may have had. Okay, Thank we'll you. We'll start down at this end, and, and I'll ask Mr. Rodriguez to disclose any ex parte communication. None for me at all. Okay. I visit the site. I have regularly because I live close by, but I specifically <coughs> did so again. 
You, you spoke to? I, I didn't speak anyway. Oh, I just visited okay. the site. Okay, great. Thank you. I've just visited the site, walked around the property, in the front, on the sides, in the back. Okay. Trespassed a little bit. Okay. Dr. Pfeffer? None. None? No. Okay. Nothing for me. And I drove the site. I, I drove, I did not get out and walk it, but I did drive the, the, the roadway network. Okay. Okay, are we, are, are we ready to proceed? Yes. Okay. Uh, this 5.3 acres location, it is located just to the west of Forest Edge Drive and to the east of the Persimmon Road slash Wawa Convenience Store. It's located on the north side of Hallam Boulevard, situated north uh, basically of the Deltona High School. <clears throat> Since this property is located within the activity center, any development request needs to be processed through a planned unit development rezoning, hence the request for the business plan unit uh, development rezoning. Uh, the activity center, as the title implies, is intended to represent an area of land use uh, synergy, facilitating a high level of commerce and employment strategically situated at a major interstate four interchange, I-4 and 472. Uh, the project uses proposed are retail and service commercial oriented. Uh, the, the proposal is to create three lots and these three lots are envisioned to support uh, three uh, drive-through, or excuse me, yeah, three drive-through restaurants and a small about 4,000 square foot retail office space uh, leasable area. The project also consists of a landscape tract located on the front near the uh, Howland Boulevard corridor. This is an area of, of super elevation. Uh, it'll probably be manipulated and managed to facilitate a market window and may be used for signage for the project. Uh, there's also a stormwater track that's pretty self-explanatory, it's for retention purposes. Finally, in the northwestern section of this, there is an area which is about a third of an air, acre identified as a future development node. Uh, Currently, the utility of this future development area is, is lacking with regard to supporting commercial development. And if this area is ever to be developed, it needs to have extra land added to it. And the way that this development uh, agreement is written as part of the BPUD is that any development of that area will need to be processed as a major amendment. It will come back to the PZ board and ultimately be decided by the city commission. Uh, uses that will not be allowed uh, include, but are not limited to, an automotive repair garage or, and a nightclub. Uh, the goal is to limit uses to low intensity neighborhood oriented commercial development that is co compatible with or can be made compatible with nearby single family development. The project is located near established single, ha single family neighborhoods, uh, Arbor Ridge and the Autumn Woods neighborhoods more specifically. The goal is to provide a level of separation uh, through buffers and the strategic location of a stormwater management area to, like I said, facilitate separation from the commercial active development area, the local roads, and ultimately the residential development. As part of this applica application, the applicant has arranged to purchase the nearest home and lot to this property and will be incorporated into the d larger development program and be used for to support a buffer and a stormwater management area. Residential property to the north will be afforded a 25 foot landscape buffer and a six foot high masonry wall. Along Forest Edge Drive, there will be a 15 foot landscape buffer maintained. Let's talk about access to the property. There will be no access on Howland Boulevard. 
The goal there is to minimize or eliminate driveway cuts on this major thoroughfare to avoid turning maneuvers and you know traffic friction. There will be a proposed one uh, access point off Forest Edge Drive and two access points off of a local road that serves the current Wawa de uh, development off of a roadway called Persimmon Drive. With regard to access on Forest Edge, the access may be located to a line or plus up with a local road known as Box Elder. There is a provision to shift this access point to provide greater separation from the Forest Edge and Hallam Boulevard intersection northward to align with another local road called Scenic Woods Trail. Uh, just, you know, there's also been discussion as well about limiting the access movement on the Forest Edge driveway cut. Right now it is planned for a full movement. <clears throat> The anticipated main access points for this project will come off Persimmon. Uh, the reason for that anticipation includes the fact that the Persimmon Road cut is associated with a right turn lane, so it's, it's safer and more ready ingress and egress to this project. <clears throat> Excuse me, Ron. Yes, ma'am. Do we have anything that we can put up there that people can see what we're talking about? I, I think that the applicant, I'm not intimate with their PowerPoint presentation, okay. but I'd be willing to bet based on the fact that we've seen a lot of other, ah, there we go. Okay. Thank you. Th thank you, Mark. With regard to access, you notice that, there, that there's a proposed driveway cut that, that pluses or lines up with Box Elder. There is a provision to relocate that to the north to another local road northward called Scenic Woods Drive. But if you, locate, if you look at the left-hand side of that illustration, there is two driveway cuts on local road Persimmon that is exclusively commercial serving. Does, does that help, you know, provide some reference for, for this? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, with regard to traffic, the project is anticipated to generate uh, over 1,900 trip ins per day. To mitigate traffic, the applicant will be constructing a right turn lane, a dedicated right turn lane. It is depicted on the site plan from Forest Edge leading to Howland Boulevard. Uh, also, the applicant will be paying almost $160,000 in fair share credited by Volusia County. City staff suggests the Planning and Zoning Board recommend the City Commission approve the Howland Boulevard Marketplace Business Plan Unit development for the following reasons. The request is consistent with the comprehensive plan. The request furthers economic, uh, city economic goals. There is infrastructure to serve the project, both roadway, water, and sewer. By the way, this project will be served by the county's Deltona North Utility Service Area and the project will be responsible for adding a right turn lane on the Forest Edge Drive corridor leading to Howland Boulevard. I'd be happy to field any questions you all may have with regard to this proposal. Okay, before um, we hear from the applicant and the public, is there any, <clears throat> I, are there any questions anybody has of Mr. Paradise? I, I, have, a, I have a couple. Um, you indicated that there was 19, 1,900 trips per day. I'm assuming those are new trips. Yes, they, they are new trips. They're, they're not just dispersed from. No, it's not. It, it, does, it, it, it doesn't include pass okay. by or anything like that. And, and on page four of, of uh, the uh, presentation, the, pre the, the uh, uh, staff report. Staff report. Thank you. <laughs> it says, uh, the land is currently mostly zoned ag with the exception of the single family lot part of the projected project zoned R1. The single family parcel has already been environmentally altered with the development of the Timbercrest subdivision. Can you clarify what? Yeah, the the, there is a single means? family dwelling unit and an accessory structure on that project. Okay, and so when I drove that area, I noticed there was, it, it appeared there were zoning signs up in front of two homes, 
is there two homes there? Just I'm seeing there's one. just there's two structures, one home. One home. Okay. All right. Okay. And then I I did not hear anything um, about, uh, and I think I believe I saw in the agenda packet. I'm trying to find it. Um, pedestrian issues. I, I I know these are drive-in restaurants. However. As everybody knows, Volusia County and the Deltona Daytona area has either one or two, I think it's number two in the United States for pedestrian deaths and bike deaths. There's, we have a problem and if we don't start addressing how we're gonna move pedestrians even within an environment that we think is going to be mostly cars, especially because that particular uh, site is close to the Wawa. There, there's all kinds of activity. There's for sale signs up and down the road. We're up to the hospital where Halifax is. So, how, why do we not address the pedestrian and and uh, bike issues for that we, site? We typically do that during the land development review phase. But we did have a conversation about pedestrian access and talked about the extension of a sidewalk along Persimmon to the north and you know which kind of just terminates at the end of that road and we also put in the development agreement that there's going to be a robust pedestrian connection to the Forest okay. Edge Drive so that it can be accessed. We also talked about striping across Forest Edge as well. You and know, just to demarcate that and provide that warning for drivers. And, and there is a school there that's very close by, and these are going to be restaurants, drive-through fast food restaurants. I oh, would yeah. anticipate that you're going to have, there'll be a lot of student volume using them. And so there is no safe crossing on Howland. Has that been a, from the school that I could find in the in the package? Did I miss it or is it? We, we did not discuss that, that crossing of Howland Boulevard. In the, in, in the package. Okay, and is it too late to talk about that? I do not think so. Okay, all right, okay. Any, any other questions? Anybody have any questions? Okay, Ms. Burke. Which restaurants do you anticipate or expect to occupy those three? I'm gonna defer that question respectfully to the applicant. Okay, has the city considered having something other than fast food restaurants in this corridor? Uh, not in this context, but I will say it does not preclude uh, a sit-down restaurant. And maybe I missed it. What is the sizes, the square foot size of these restaurants? Uh, my eyes aren't that good. I can ask that. Yeah, yeah I think they, they've got a better handle on okay. that. Okay, we'll get that from them. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes, Ron, I have a question. My question is, uh, is uh, you mentioned there are drive-through restaurants. Does that mean there's not gonna be any dining room associated with this restaurant at all? Places to sit down and eat, like, uh, Let's say Dunkin' Donuts does in some cases that you have a drive-through, but you have uh, tables and... Based on the square footage of these facilities proposed, yes, there will be inside dining. Okay, so then come back to the pedestrian issue. <clears throat> if you have a sit-down area there, don't you think that's going to increase or uh, promote, okay, kids coming from, so, or young adults coming from the high school across to sit down there and increase the pedestrian traffic, okay, creating another hazard, another problem for the city. I think this th th this project would have a great appeal for that market. So then are we going, <clears throat> is there some consideration about addressing this issue about pedestrian? Uh, I think that, that looking at that safe crosswalk across, you know, the Howland Boulevard mm -hmm. corridor is is worthy of looking at and you know I will take that as direction if I if I get consensus that you know we, we would certainly we certainly would like to look at that and revisit that when this advances to the city commission okay. well um, is there a consensus to do that yeah okay I, I, you got I, your I, consensus 
Yeah, but I, uh, can I add to this that if we're going to look at the, uh, the pedestrian crossing issue, we should think also about a pedestrian crossing light, not just a crosswalk. Yeah, and I, and I think that, I, I think we got to keep in mind too, this is a county road, so I'm not really sure, you know, how that, but I, I hear you. I understand. Okay. They have, they have really advanced pedestrian crosswalks to the, in today's market where they can be lights flash. I mean, the county has really some good examples up there up by their building that I think work really well. But that is a concern because the kids are going to want to right. pop over there. Well, that's, the, that's the big thing. That's a county road. It's yeah. not owned by Deltona. Yeah. So for us to say we mandatory want a crosswalk there, that's not up to us because it's Volusia County Road, not Deltona Road. That's the problem. I, and I agree with you with a crosswalk. I, I mean, I understand, and I think my, <coughs> Sheriff Shitwood could make a lot of money if he had somebody patrolling that road all the time because of, he's becoming a, uh, a I would call a Deltona 500 yeah. every day. Yeah, yeah, that's a really busy area. Yeah, I, it I, is a congested area. I, I think that the applicant, I'm sure, is hearing our concerns, and I know that they will try to address them as best they can, and understanding we're working with the county. But this is, for me, from this point out, after having that information, I am going to always be asking the question about pedestrian and bike safety and how we do interconnects, how we move people. It is isn't. It is no longer just about cars for me. So I'm just putting that out there to you, Ron. Just expect it from me. Duly noted and very welcome. Madam yeah. Chair. And along with that, I, I, I actually I think they even should consider an overhead crosswalk. Is that what you're talking about? Because there's those no are, way you're going to keep them kids. Those are from, really expensive. I know they are, but that's like you're just asking for it. Those kids, keeping those kids from yeah. going across that, at that, yeah. that road gets crazy. Yeah. I just... I think that is going to be a major, major concern. Yeah, and you, you, you may find that, that depending on, on, on the flow and, and how the school, you know, the, its pedestrian network, maybe there'd be better served, and I'm just kind of just talking now, with a, a, a crosswalk at the uh, Wolf Pack and uh, uh, Howland yeah. intersection. A further. Really? Yeah. yeah. Hey, you got one in Osteen, Madam Chair. <coughs> I know, <laughs> for I, bikes. I did. I got one you got in bike, got it for bikes. <laughs> How more important are the children, right? Come on, we can get it done. <laughs> All right. Okay, there's no further questions for Ron. We will ask the applicant to make their presentation, and then we will hear from the public. Good morning, good Madam Chair, afternoon. or good evening, Madam good Chair. Good evening. Wrong, wrong time of day. <laughs> um, for the record, Mark Watts with the law firm of Cobb Cole, 231 North Woodland Boulevard, DeLand. I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you this evening, and um, I've been fighting laryngitis all week, so I... I was going to say, that's not your rules. <laughs> I know, I, I sound a little froggy, but um, it was not good. I had three and a half hours worth of hearings at uh, DeLand on um, uh, Monday night, and, and so I'm still recovering from that. Um, but I'll do my best. We've got uh, just a couple slides to walk through with you on this, and um, you know this is one of the interesting. And I appreciate the conversation here, and I think we can respond to and make sure that we're addressing the concerns that you raise, particularly with pedestrian safety, because I think that is absolutely vital, um, particularly with the proximity of the high school right there. As a you know father of a high schooler that walks down Jacobs Dairy Road in, in Deland to get down to the racetrack, uh, I understand the need. And there's no sidewalks there. And, terrified me when I first found out that they used to do that. So Jake, just off record, is Jacob Dairy is that a is that a county road? That's a county road. County road. Well you they ought to be putting something in there. Is they they, we, they ought to. They um, have a policy about schools. They do. Sidewalks. Yeah. So. But they they haven't connected that one yet. All right. So kids okay. walk down the, the grass all the time right there. So in any event, look, <laughs> with regard to the application that's, that's here before you this evening, um, just to give you a little bit of background, it was interesting. I was at uh, DeLand on Monday night working on the other side of the interstate, just north of, uh, of 472, in this area that's you know called the Activity Center. And it's been around for a really long time. Uh, in fact, I went back and looked at some of the, the basic policies that were adopted with the original county Southwest Activity Center. I think it was 1992, yeah. somewhere around there. Right uh, there. I made the reference on Monday night that it, you know, I'm coming up on my 30-year high school reunion, 1992. So the planning for this activity center has been in, in place for at least that long. Um, and if you look at the middle 
uh, map here. So this is your existing condition um, with regard to, you know, you see the, the Halifax Health uh, development here with the Trafalgar project. Wawa is now in this location. Here's the parcel we're looking at. Um, this kind of red area is what's included in the activity center uh, land use classification. So that's the future commercial that's been, been planned for, you know, as part of that activity center. And then this is your current zoning. This shows that, um, you know, this is that kind of remaining piece of agricultural zoning. And if you look under your land development regulations, agricultural zoning in Deltona is specifically there sort of as a holding zoning classification until urban development proceeds. So here you've got the, um, you know, nothing has been proposed with this property. The activity center land use requires a PUD. So it's been sitting in this agricultural zoning until a proposal was brought forward to rezone it to PUD. Um, so here's the, you know, again, the configuration that, um, that we're looking for would rezone this portion of the property um, to PUD. A couple things I wanted to point out, because, you know, this has been a really interesting piece of property, and it's, you know, I forgot to mention AVID Engineering is here, Pete Pensa and Ron Henson, who have been working on this for about two years now, um, right, about two years since the original applications, and I've been involved with it, with it for about 18 months. I was brought in to help speed things up, but obviously we didn't do that. Um, but uh, in any event, so this has been, we've been working with your staff for about two years to, to kind of work through some of the issues here. You've got a piece of property here, as a lot of the property north of, of Howland um, in the activity center you know, had a very fractured ownership pattern in the beginning. So even here, in the original footprint of this property, we had two ownerships. We had the Ford family that had some of it, and then um, the uh, Deltona Holdings uh, that had a portion of it. Um, one of the things that actually came out of the discussion with, um, with your staff uh, was how could we improve the buffering and the separation with um, Forest Edge Drive. And so the single family home that's zoned R1 currently was not originally part of the, the plan, was not originally part of the proposal. That came about because your staff proactively said, you really ought to integrate that. And so our clients went out, worked with that landowner, got their property under contract to incorporate that into the, into the plan as well. And so we expanded it to, to include that. And that also, you know, brought about the, the question of making sure we had enough buffering for the residential to the north. So we've got the wall and the additional buffering that's been added to the plan from there. But <clears throat> with regard to the, to the overall layout, you know, again, as, as Ron indicated, there are cross access opportunities that go over to the commercial areas to the west. Um, so off of Persimmon, Wawa is just, on the, just off the screen here. Um, so off of this local road, there's two access driveways that come in. Um, we don't know the specific list or the total list of, of businesses or restaurants that would be here. I do know that I believe um, Tijuana Flats uh, is one of the ones that is looking to come in here. Um, I know that I think Popeye's Chicken was one. Uh, there's a, a couple of others. Um, if you look at, there was originally actually four buildings on this site. Um, that was another thing that based on staff, you know, working with staff through the past couple of years, we, we reduced the size and the footprint. I think there's a total of about total of about 15,000 square feet of development on the 5.3 acres now. Um, so it does have indoor dining rooms for the restaurants there. This building in particular, you referenced the Dunkin' Donuts building, this is a similar building to that type of building where you'd have the opportunity to have a restaurant and then a couple of other retail spaces adjacent to that. So if you see kind of how this building is configured, you've got, you know, a, a, a area there, a separate you know, area here and a separate area here. So you can have multiple businesses locating in that area. So um, with that, the other thing uh, we have mentioned that um, this is based on the initial coordination with the county with regard to how we access Forest Edge. Um, their desire is always to kind of create intersections so you don't have one road coming in on one side of the street and another one coming in that doesn't line up. And so we've you know, brought the, the driveway connection to come out here with Box Elder, um, and then obviously we've got the turning lanes and everything else that'll have to be improved as part of the connection into Howland. That's gonna be part of what we have to coordinate with the county since that's their roadway. Um, that'll be handled through a county use permit for those connections and how that intersection is, is upgraded. Um, as Ron mentioned, the staff did want us to include in the, in, the, in the development agreement the alternative of potentially coming up to this point with, for that access point. Um, we think that creates some challenges from a stormwater standpoint. We're willing to put that language in here so we can explore that with staff. Um, I don't know that that ultimately would be possible from a technical standpoint with regard to the stormwater design. 
So, um, but we, again, we wanna work with staff to make sure that everything is, is uh, copacetic with, with regard to how the access is managed. And um, last thing I'll point out before addressing the pedestrian um, safety issues, we do have these kind of odd little parcels here and here. Um, that's another factor of kind of that, rem that, that remnant parcel uh, ownership pattern here. Um, there were a couple of pieces of land that were owned by one of the owners who's selling to our clients, um, but those parcels were not included in the, in the PD originally. And so we've added them in simply to give them some form, some zoning. And so with regard to the parcel here, we knew we needed to grade it. We knew that it may be available for signage and things of that nature. And so those, those are the, the limits of the uses there. And I think from staff standpoint, it was important to make sure there was, it was clear that this remnant parcel didn't have any direct access rights onto Howland. So we've added it in, we've put those restrictions in place as well. The parcel here really doesn't have much it can be used for. It's too small to leave it out of the project. That's why we've incorporated it, because if, if you left it out, um, it would become a non-conforming parcel and uh, wouldn't Which be able to- Which parcel is that, Mr. It's Watts? this one up here, uh, Pat. It's the- Okay the future development one. that So okay. we put it in here. We said it, it has the uses associated okay. with the PD, but in order to develop it, you would need to come back through and do an amendment to the PD to give it more form. What really needs to happen with that parcel is there is additional land up here that needs to be consolidated with that property. So we're really just setting the stage for that to happen at some point down the road, and that would likely be accessed out of the Halifax Crossings project, um, I think, down the road but it basically leaves it from, keeps it from being a remnant parcel sitting out there that you know, is not within a PD, um, and this creates the framework for it to have to come back to the Planning Board and City Commission to define what future use it may have. Can I, I, I need further clarification sure. on that, because I'm, I'm looking at this map here, mm -hmm. the, the overhead, and it looks like there's lots of little lines, lots of little property pieces in that bigger piece that's green. Is, is that? Accurate. I mean, those are individual lots. There, there's a lot of small parcels there. Yes. Right. And and so even if you look at um, if you look at the internal layout of you know the parcel that we're working with, you know there was a lot of old platted lots that have been consolidated into the ownership that we've got now. So so you're saying these are now consolidated? The ones within the red box. Yeah, it's between the two owners. The ones within the red box. Correct. So the to ones the north, you still have some fractured ownership. You've got a lot of it yeah, that's owned by Trafalgar. You do. You've got a lot of it that's owned by. There's some pieces that are owned by um, Deltona Holdings, but that's why I think you've seen some of this take a while to move forward in Deltona is because of the fractured ownership north of, of um, you, you actually, even in the Trafalgar project, the Halland Crossing, or the Halifax project, um, yeah, there are some yeah. pieces that are out parcels in there that are, that never, they've never been able to obtain Except title to. Except they're a lot bigger. Yes. And you can do something with them. That is them. true. So, so this one, the, the interesting thing with this one, Pat, is when, you know, if, if this one, so originally that was not included in the PD, but it was owned, it was gonna be left as kind of an orphan parcel there. And so we, we added it to the PD so that when we come through, because what we'll have to do from here is go through the subdivision process. And if that parcel, so a portion of this parcel is also in this footprint, what's now that parcel. So it's, it's now part of a bigger parcel um, that still isn't conforming, but you know this is the property line that our clients had negotiated with the owners. And so if we left that piece out, it would be a non-conforming kind of orphaned piece and it would, it would actually violate your subdivision regulations when we came through and didn't create it as a tract within the subdivision. So what, by adding that into the PD, it lets us just say, this is a future development tract. It's too small to do anything with yet. You'll have to come back and, do, and amend the PD in the future if you're able to do anything with that. Otherwise, it just stays undeveloped. But how, how do you, and I, yeah, I don't know if you're done yet or not, but I, I'm, 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 just, I'm stuck on this, these fractured parcel sites. Mm -hmm. on, on this overhead, there's this green strip that still stays down here, which that's, if I understand correctly, that's the Wawa. I mean, it, it, this is an old overhead because- That's, that's Persimmon. That's where the street that's is. That's where the street Correct. is. That, that so is if a, you look now, Persimmon comes up here. 
and that's where these are connecting to. Persimmon actually goes okay. further north with that plat. So there is an internal network. There's a, there's a, they're not going to have to come. They're going to come in on <clears throat> this whole section here has an internal network of roads that they're not going to be impacting Howland. There's old in paper plats. Out. There's old okay. paper plats there. And so we're trying to retrofit a lot of okay. those old 1920s. I remember Herky, Herky yeah. Huffman talking about that. Yes. And yeah. so you've got a lot of that here that we're going to have to clean up. The issue was if we didn't bring in that last piece, it would be sitting out there, it would be non-conforming. Okay. Technically, under your subdivision code, it would probably make this parcel non-conforming by association because you've divided a parcel without approval. Okay. Um, so we've added them in. We've just basically said it's going to sit here and be held until something else happens in the future, and then it comes back to you and to the city commission. So let me just real quick address um, pedestrian safety. We are more than happy to work. We, we recognize the importance of that. Um, we're more than happy to work with both the city and the county staff to make sure we've got all the striping, all the, the, the augmented pedestrian crossings necessary here. Um, I do rec I know the one you're talking about at the, on Rich at the county building. You push the button, it flashes. Um, the, and I don't know if that's the right one for here, Mark, but I do know that they need, you all need to do something. Yeah. Well, I think that as we work through, you know, number one, we do have proportionate fair share dollars that, you know, we can work with the county to implement those not only for vehicular trips. Those can be used for, you know, some, some pedestrian improvements as well. So, um, you know, I think that's something we can certainly look at. Um, you know, and, and certainly look at how we, we address the Howland Forest Edge intersection and the crosswalks there. I do tend to agree with Ron. There is a plan for the property that we rezoned several years ago at the corner of Wolfpack and Howland for another signal to go in there, I believe, with, um, and that would be another opportunity for some crosswalks. So I think that providing kind of those multiple opportunities for crosswalks would also be a good thing moving forward. It requires our, you know, us all to work together with the city, the county, the landowners. We're more than happy to do that. Um, so, and if you even wanted to include, a, you know, something in the development agreement or a recommendation that we have, pedestrian improvements will be coordinated with the city and the county. We're happy to add that. Okay. Thank you. So with that, that we're here for any other questions. Uh, that was it. We'll start Two slides. Here. No? <clears throat> One? No questions. Okay. Thank you very much. Eric? I have no Okay. okay. Dr. You. Pfeffer? Yeah. Um, how will the internal traffic flow go with these three drive throughs so that's actually, that was actually one of the reasons why you see three buildings instead of four now. It was far too busy with the, the fourth one, you know, kind of in there before. So what we have right now, and I've got our engineers here, if I misspeak on anything, I can ask them to come up. But what you see here is our best thought at that right now. You, your staff and your engineering staff will actually tell us whether we've gotten it right yet or not as we go through the site plan process. Right now what we have is, um, right now what we have is you do have circulation around this building here. Um, you have a rear road that runs kind of along here and allows access to each of these individual places where there may be a drive-through. Um, and so the, the circulation generally is that it would come in here or come in up through here. Even, actually, no, let me take it back. Come in here and up and around. Um, it can circulate from the Wawa drive-through. It can come all the way across here and up around either into this building, this building, or that building. So it provides for separate circulation within each of those footprints. We would need to provide for pedestrian separation and all those things. Those are all things that are required by your development code. So, and, and we would also have to differentiate and provide crosswalks within those easements or within those parking areas as well. Ron, do we have standards for this? Uh, yes, we do have standards and just to kind of uh, foreshadow the, the uh, land development review process, what we have here is a, is a very detailed master development plan for the PUD. Uh, uh, Assistant Director Joseph Ruiz, who, you know, works back in the planning office has gone over with the applicant on this, you know, in preparation for this thing to advance through the land development process and spent a fair amount of time. And he's got a high level of expertise on, you know, the internal function of these types of projects. And they've spent a lot of time trying to get this thing where, where it'll, you know, function with, you know, appropriately. 
And, and I will say, Joe has been fantastic. Um, you know, he's been working with us on this for about 18 months now, I think since he joined the city. Yep. And, um, and uh, has helped us kind of redesign this so that as we get into the site plan process, we'll be able to comply much more easily with the city's code requirements. You know, for example, with regard to pedestrian, so you've got pedestrian connectivity, I think it was already talked about out on Persimmon, but you, it's hard to see here, but you have those crosswalks that also then continue across all of these drive accesses and everything else. And that, that's been part of the back and forth with the city about how we design this for safe internal pedestrian access as well as the external. I mean, I asked the question because um, I used the McDonald's mm -hmm. on Holland and by, by the Walmart. Yes. And um, if you go to the drive through you've got a tight turn, which is right where if there's anybody inside it, mm -hmm. it, it it's not very safe. To it's be. a conflict. So I'm just wondering how you're going to handle that. Yeah, so so we'll, we will have to get into more detail about that. When we go through the site plan process, we actually have to simulate the traffic coming through the, the, the site plan, um, usually for larger trucks and everything else. But, you know, it lets you simulate the turning radius and everything else so that you can see how things circulate. And so that'll be part of that site plan engineering review. And, and if I might add, there, there are explicit storage requirements right. for drive-through. Uh, for, for drive-through facilities in the land development code. Correct. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Strasick? <clears throat> now, how much of a space did you say the buffer zone is in the back? Because, I mean, I, I hate to say it, Mark, but this is about the first time I think seeing I've been on this board for a couple of years that I'm not hounding you about something. Because this is the first time I've actually, the buffer zone is there without us crying about it. There's a six-foot brick wall that's blocking for the sound barrier. Mm -hmm. And if anybody's been to Orange City by the Chili's and all that, it's almost like the drive th right through there where they got the Chili's and the other place next mm -hmm. to it where they have one entrance at the beginning of Chili's and then on the same, same side street over on the next street, there's two entrances to get into them two or three restaurants. It, so it's basically the same. This is a little bit bigger, but it's almost that same, very similar. That same concept of parking and going through there. And I mean, that buffer zone, that's a large buffer zone to the people there. It, I mean, it, and frankly, again, that was one of the things that, you know, at, at, as we talked through the So you listened to us crying about it for the last couple of years. We did. We oh, did. Okay. Because, um, I mean, that dead end street on Persimmon, too, that's a, if you go up in a Wawa, that's a dead end. Right. And you're going to put two entrances there. So, I mean, it. Correct. I'm, are you good? We, we listen. I'm finally happy. <laughs> okay. M Mrs. Burke, any, I'm still in the square footage. How big are these restaurants going to be? They, they vary. I think they, they probably average about 3,000, 3,500 square feet. Um, you may have larger ones over in the, in the building that has room for multiple, um, you know, uh, different users because you can combine some of those if you have a larger. So, for example, like, um, if you know the public's on the south end of Deland, there's a mm -hmm. Kiki's, you know, I mean, that's probably five or 6,000 square feet. So there is some flexibility built in here because we don't know who the final occupants will be um, beyond the two that I mentioned. I think those, those are two that there are uh, leases or at least letters of intent with. Okay, thank you. Mr. Rodriguez, any further questions? I have a question and I, perhaps you may not be able to answer it, but we have a McDonald's, we have two large gas stations that serve food, snacks, or there's a lot of traffic there. Uh, and you thinking about adding three more eating establishments. Mm -hmm. uh, from the economic perspective, is it viable? I mean, I'm just concerned because I, don't, mm -hmm. I would hate to see the Altona to have wound up with two boarded up restaurants within three to five years from now. Sure. Okay. So I think, I think that goes back to the, the concept of the activity center. Um, and if you think about how this was planned 30 years ago, um, the idea was we have employment opportunities in this area and then we have the opportunities for things that help serve those employees. And so here we now have things like the hospital that's come in. You have the rest of that vacant land. There's anything from, uh, I think some ALFs that are looking at some of that property now. There's a memory care facility, I think, looking at some of that property now. So you've got all of these things that bring employees and visitors to that area. You have Amazon, you have the other, uh, Portland Industrial that also are bringing employees to the area. You have the apartments that are under construction. And so providing for the other thing that the activity center does is says you, you want these things as primary uses, your employment base. 
but you also want the service uses that they need, like restaurants and, and retail with cell phones or if an employee needs to run out and do something like that on their lunch hour. So um, this is really specifically contemplated under your plan. And our clients, you know, they're in the business of putting restaurants in places where they, they, they and their tenants know that they'll succeed. And so they've, they've you know, nobody's 100% accurate at prediction, but they, they know their market fairly well, and they're confident that this is a good location, particularly with the growth that's occurring here. So. Okay. Okay. I have one quick question. Sure. Did I read somewhere, and I think I'm certain that one of those anticipated to be a coffee shop. Is that still there, the plans? Uh, there was, a, I think, early on. Um, again, this has been about a two-year process. There was a coffee shop that had signed a, a lease at one point that I don't believe is active currently. That coffee shop may come back. Okay. So we do, we just we'll have to see where it is once we we uh, move forward with the site plans. Okay, we will. Um, thank thank you. Happy to come back up and answer any yes, other questions. If there's any other questions, we will now move to the public. If you um, want to speak, you need to have filled out or do that now, a card with your name and your address and hand it to the clerk's office and they will um, um, call your so name. Are you ready? Um, we have Tina Wright Stewart. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my only concern is um, being, Would you, uh, would you give us your name and my, your address for the okay, record? I apologize. That's my fine. name is fine. Tina Wright Stewart. My address is 3246 Scenic Woods Drive. So I'm in the corner lot right on Scenic Woods Drive. Okay. Um, and I do have some concerns because um, we just bought the house. Um, I have a quadriplegic son that will be coming home the end of next month. And... I, from the proposed, I see that there's going to be a lot of traffic, I believe, coming through that area. I just redid my fence, and my fence is a five foot on that side. And with the traffic that they're anticipating, I don't feel comfortable that my son and my family will have enough privacy to handle the traffic that's coming through. Because as it is now, when you walk past my house, you can already see over the fence. So if I'm outside in the pool with my son and he's doing his exercise with his instructor, then we don't have any privacy. If I'm outside with my grandchildren and if you walk by again, we don't have any privacy. So I do have some concerns about the traffic that's going to be coming to the area. Okay. Thank you. Next. Carmi, um, Carmi Daris, Rivera Vega. Okay. We'll take one at a time. Thanks. Good evening. He's my husband, Angel oh, okay. Hernandez. All right. Um, we all work together. I get we are, it. We're a team. <laughs> You're a team. I understand. Um, so my name is Carmi Daris Rivera Vega. Um, and your I'm, address, please? Yes. I'm at 3244 Bucks Elder. Um, street is basically the second house on um, after the quarter after the quarter um, my concern really is traffic um, currently there's a heavy um, individual and actually um, cars um, traffic usually when there's an accident on Howland Box Elder is the street that is used for main traffic. Mm -hmm. um, the turn on Howland right now is a uh, no U-turn, and currently we have problems with our um, driveway because people actually turn on our driveway. So how, yeah, they drive all the way up to like if they own the house. Um, also, the community is very, um, involved with activities. If you pass by this community during Halloween, they even give out ice cream. Um, that's, I mean, it, the community actually um, sees a very heavy movement of individuals on cars, even from outside. Um, so you not only have to count the pedestrians from the school, but also from other communities that are actually participating in these community traditions um, that, that are already established. Um, also, the community, um, has a lot of other people 
that walk just to you know exercise in the morning is very heavy. Um, so just traffic is our main concern. Okay, thank you. Okay, our next speaker, Allison Loyacono. Okay. Hello. Mm -hmm. Do I have to re-say? So you'll give your, us your name and your address for the hey, record? Hey, Marsha, they weren't sworn in. Oh. oh. I did not. I changed my mind. Okay. Hi, my name is Allison Loyagano. I am, I live at 3241 Kings Ridge Terrace. So that is, if you're going down Forest Edge, we're the third street right there. Mm -hmm. um, our main thing is also probably going to be really repetitive tonight, but it is going to be having that entrance on Forest Edge. Um, like they were saying before, one of the things we were saying is Halloween. It's wild. It gets so packed. And there's so many people, but also, like you were saying, Madam, um, Deltona High School is right there, and we have so many families that walk to school, that walk. We also have an elementary school that I work at. Uh, it's really local. It's Timbercrest Elementary, and there's a couple of kids that actually, like, will ride their bikes with their parents there, so that's that additional walking, and those are, like, little, little children. Um, we also have school buses that pick up kids, and if you're going out that exit, there is a long line because it's a short light, especially if you're turning left or light, left or right. So if you're gonna have an extra entrance right here, and like they were saying, a bunch of people wanting to get food, where are those cars gonna go? It's, I feel like that's gonna be potential for a lot of accidents. I know that's hypothetical, but if everyone's trying to get to one place and it's just one entrance, it's a neighborhood, it's not really, kind of really built for like high population traffic. And of course, you know, we do live in Florida. There are a couple of road ragers. If they're trying to get out and there's a backup, are they gonna be speeding through neighborhoods to try to go through box holder to get on Howland and cause problems that way? Um, so I know those are just kind of like my concerns speaking for what I've noticed in the neighborhood, even without having that there, that's some problems that we see, even with just Dunkin' Donuts and Wawa being right there. We see like traffic and like people who don't live in the neighborhood driving by to try to beat the light. So that was, I knew my concern. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, Marco Loyacono. <laughs> so, can you give us your name and your address, please? Uh, Marco Loyacono, uh, live on Kings Ridge Terrace, and that was my wife. Um, similar concerns like everyone else. Uh, my profession is a claims adjuster, so I deal with accidents every day, also pedestrian fatalities, and uh, this does look like a nightmare, um, especially coming out of the exit there on Forest Edge, where it's not gonna be a four-way stop and you can't do a four-way stop there. If you make a right coming out of there, the strip isn't long to get to that light. Even if you add another turn lane to take a right off Howland, there's gonna be backed up traffic both ways where people can't even get out. And like someone else said, there's already a lot of traffic here and kids crossing the roads. You could pull all the pedestrian walkways you, you want, but drivers, you know, they drive how they drive. So even with crosswalks there, you're just, gonna, you're just asking for an accident, cars and pedestrians. I imagine the first week you're gonna get some T-bones and some major accidents, and there's already a lot of accidents on the intersection. And what people are also gonna do is go down Box Elder and go to Dunkin' Donuts and try to get on Howland there, or drive farther. Um, the other neighborhood has an entrance, and those intersections are dangerous. There's no st stoplight there, and it's hard to see if you're making a left or a right onto Howland from Dunkin' Donuts or the other neighborhood entrance. It's hard to see if you make a left or right. So you're gonna see a lot of more accidents over there too. But that was my main concern. I deal with tragic things every day. I, I would hate to see it happen here. Thank you. Thank you.
That, there's no more. Okay, that concludes public participation. Okay, we'll close public participation and I'll give Mr. Watts an opportunity to make any closing comments before yeah. we go back to the commission. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we definitely understand, and, and I think we've talked about, um, you know, we were happy to work with your staff and the, and the county staff to, to make sure that we design safe connectivity. Um, one of the things that we have to deal with, though, is you, you do have the county that controls Howland that says you have to access the local roads on either right. side. And so we, we have to serve kind of both those masters. We want to do it in a way that's certainly is not creating problems for the, for the neighbors. And so we'll, we'll certainly work with that. I've given them my cards to, to make sure if they have questions, they can reach out directly to me and we can put them in touch with our uh, design team as well to make sure that as we move forward, um, we're, we're planning this out in a thoughtful way that takes into account pedestrian activity in the neighborhoods can, as well. Can, we, can you all look at the, the width of the sidewalks as well? I mean, sidewalks don't seem to be built for people to actually walk on them. And, and that would be something, particularly because the high school's there, particularly sure. because I'm hearing about families out mm -hmm. and about, and maybe maybe making those sidewalks if, they, if there's enough uh, right of way there to. Well, this is actually an area where we've gotten more than. I mean, there's if you look at this layout, the county actually has a tremendous amount of right of way all the way through here. This is all right of way. Okay. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of area to work with the city and the county um, to make sure that we're addressing these concerns as we move forward. I will say to, to your concern about you know coming all the way up here for access, that's one of the concerns that we had with regard to bringing commercial traffic that much farther up into um, the, residential the residential neighborhood as well. So we think it makes sense to keep the traffic here and to really focus on making sure that that's a safe both vehicular and pedestrian access point but we don't have all of our traffic coming out there because, Pete, I don't know if you want to, we do have some information on the trip distribution that may be helpful okay. with regard to understanding we'll where trips that. are going. Sure. Good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Peter Pensa. I'm an AICP certified planner with AVID Group, the planners, engineers, and surveyors for the project, and I have been sworn. Uh, before I do that, let me touch upon uh, what Mark had talked about earlier, the general circulation. Uh, the Internally, the idea is to have this continuous vehicular flow across the front of the property to allow that unimpeded circulation of uh, vehicles, uh, regardless of which of the three buildings or the multiple uses that will be uh, frequented. Also, uh, the, again, the two-way uh, traffic circulation around the back. You'll notice that the uh, dumpster enclosures here, 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 and delivery areas are all designed to be accessed off persimmon from the back so they can come in and get, pick up uh, trash or, or drop off deliveries, circulate back around and come back out uh, in order to help with uh, not providing those trips on, on, on the resident's uh, road as they, you know, they would express concern. Uh, there's also pedestrian connectivity uh, throughout all three road frontages will have a sidewalk built along the length of the, of the uh, property frontage. There's a continuous sidewalk that runs across the front interconnecting all of the uh, uses as well as connecting the two streets together. Likewise, there's internal sidewalks uh, for people to use to walk from their vehicles to the storefronts. Uh, as well as sidewalks for the employees to be able to go out to the dumpster and loading areas uh, safely. Uh, there, we have done the, the um, vehicle turning analysis to make sure that the turning movements work adequately, plus we have to meet the standards of the individual uh, restaurant users, safety and convenience and how well it operates is obviously uh, fundamental to the success of their operations, so they also are concerned about and want to make sure that there's certain standards that upheld to make sure that it is convenient because if it's not convenient to get in, circulate through the through the uh, drive through then customers are not going to want to go there. So the, everything's designed around that, uh, that convenience. Uh, to reiterate one of the questions from earlier too, these uh, restaurants are all envisioned to have uh, both indoor and outdoor seating. The three particular restaurants that they're talking with do have substantial indoor seating areas. Uh, that would be a part of it. They're not strictly drive-through operations. Okay, great. And then, uh, so to get back to the regional reason why I came up here, um, in your packet was a traffic study that was prepared by Traffic Mobility it's Consultants. Pretty comprehensive. 
And so I'll, I'll try to boil it down real simple for you. Um, as was brought up earlier, there's 1,908 daily trips total. Um, of that, 127 of them are in the peak hour to give you some perspective. So if those were spaced out, you're talking about roughly two trips per minute over the course of that hour. So it's, it's not real intensive. As we talked about earlier, there are three entrances uh, proposed to the project that distribute those trips. So I would call to your attention on uh, page four of that traffic study is a diagram that shows the trip turning movements. They are complicated to um, understand, so I'll, I'll give you the, uh, the primary example, the one that the residents are most concerned about. So when you look at the Forest Edge Drive entrance, you'll see a series of numbers, and I'm gonna put my reading glasses on so I can read them. You'll see that there's a set of numbers. This is 268, 17 within brackets, 18 within another set of brackets, and then 35. What that means is that with this development, and this is based on the maximum entitlement of the 18,000 square foot being built. As Mark talked about, most likely it'll probably be something less than that that gets built. The, currently, there's 285 trips that are coming north on Forest, on Forest Edge. Of that, 268 would continue to drive north, go to their residences. 17 of those are what's called pass-by trips, which means that they will divert to go in there to pick up dinner on the way home. Uh, so they, they produce uh, the total of the 285 uh, trips that are currently using the road. In addition to that, uh, with this project, there'll be 16, I'm sorry, 18 trips that are projected to come into that entrance from that direction. Likewise, uh, coming from, coming south from the residential, there's currently 134 trips coming out to the intersection of that 131 of them would continue to drive straight out. 17 of them would come into the project in order to stop and, and frequent those businesses. And then 17 of those trips would be new ones. So what that tells you is that the trips on that road, it's first of all, the trips related to the project are a small fraction of it, uh, but it's also an equal distribution. Half the trips going in that driveway will be trips that are coming in from the, from the south, from, the, from Holland, and half of them essentially are coming from the neighborhood itself. And not quite a few of those are pass-by trips, so those are the residents that are coming and going already. I won't go into the one, the other trip distribution, but it basically works the same way. Okay. Yeah, but all those, all those numbers are there that show you what the distribution is, of, like I said, what's existing, what would be a pass-by, and what would be actually coming in and out. Yeah. Okay. So it's very think, thorough. Very, and I think, I think to put that in layman's terms, about the, the increase in traffic of new trips coming down Forest Edge in the peak hour that would be coming into the site is about 18, uh, beyond okay. what's there as pass-by trips now. Right. Okay. That makes sense, All based right. on the analysis. Any, any questions for our traffic engineer? You, thank you. It was a very <laughs> yeah. thorough presentation and report. Well, hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. I tried to simplify it. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate it. And uh, happy to answer any other questions you might have. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Okay. Actually, yes, a couple of questions. And not being familiar with the area, really, um, is there a traffic light? Is there going to be a traffic light at, at the Howland and um, what is it, Forest, uh, Forest Edge? There's one There's currently. already. Yeah. Okay, how about at uh, Persimmon Street and Howland? That's too close. No, no, no. there's not one there. Based on the spacing of the intersections, there normally would not be well, a I'm warrant just, for. I must go there. Yes, I'm, I'm just, just curiosity, okay? Um, I, I really, I really feel bad for the people that have to come out of a, come out of that neighborhood, okay? I'm trying to remember the name of the street there. What are they going to encounter? when they pull out uh, First Street, which is going to be box leather and scenic woods. Mm -hmm. uh, are they gonna have, I think they're gonna have a heck of a time trying to make a left turn in the morning to go to work. That's, that's the way I feel about it. So, so i give you an, uh, a thought on that. Um, I live in downtown Deland, and uh, one of the great things I think about you know, downtown Deland that's very similar to what's here in this neighborhood is you have a grid street pattern. 
And so that means that if you go to one point, I live a block off of 44, just north. And so if I go down and a lot of times I get down to 44 and I can't turn either way. And so I don't go 44. I go one of the other directions that I can go because I have a grid street pattern. And so here you have that same, on Box Elder in particular, I think it was said earlier, you have the alternative going in the other direction, going down to where, uh, I can't remember the north-south street by uh, Dunkin' Donuts, but you have the alternatives to go out through other, uh, through other routes, um, basically, to, to find the easiest point of access or egress. Um, and so, you know, I think we can work with, the, again, the city and the county to try and make sure that we're planning the best set of improvements here to manage traffic. But because of the planning that's already occurred here and because of the fact that you do have that grid street pattern, you're also built to accommodate some of that. This, um, not, again, not being familiar <coughs> with the area, Forest Edge, is there the only entrance to this subdivision or is there another entrance to it? Can they get in and out? Is there egress, exit, uh, over, access and egress from that neighborhood? So, sort of off over here. It connects back over to, to Howland as well. Yeah. yeah. For the back side, there's another exit? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. yeah, there is. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. Uh, we'll move to the planning board for a motion to accept or deny and please state your reason when you make that motion. Make a motion. Who I want to make a motion to accept. I'll second. Okay. I'll well, second that. Okay, so your motion would be to accept ordinance number 17-2022. 17 17 an ordinance of the city of Deltona, Florida amending the official zoning map to rezone plus 5.3 acres of land located at the northwest corner of the intersection of, I'm just putting this into the record, of Hallam Boulevard and Forest Edge. Okay, um, and we need to take a roll call vote because the members need to, to weigh in on whether they are for it or against it and their reason why, okay? Member Alexander. Yeah, I mean, this is what we, that's why it's an activity center, right? That's why we designate that area. We want to see commercial growth. We want to, I do want to make a comment about, I've heard as, a, as a, um, a commercial real estate agent exclusively for 22 years and a member of the International Council of Shopping Centers, I hear it all the time of people saying, why has the city, has the city looked at, why haven't the city getting bigger restaurants? But a lot of folks don't, respectfully don't understand that the requirements that a a Carabas or a Cheesecake Factory or any of those bigger restaurants, we just don't meet their criteria yet. It's not there to get a nice fine restaurant in Deltona yet. It's growing and getting there, but that's why we're getting so many more fast food as, as their, their requirements are a lot less for that. I also don't, I hate to see it going there into Forest Edge and I have to agree, I think that tra I've seen traffic at that light back up and people are gonna have trouble turning into this complex and, uh, and they're not getting out necessarily, but turning in there's sometimes, but maybe I don't know that, I don't understand quite the distance where that is, but I also have a feeling that QSR3 restaurant probably wouldn't uh, wanna be there if that road was, or if that interest was blocked off. Because again, their requirements, they're not gonna wanna be at the back end of the property. And uh, they're gonna say people, the restaurants are very, very fickle and they have some very, very specific guidelines to make, make it work. But um, I, I kinda hate to see it, them happen to that being the spot. But um, for whatever reasons, we are seeing the growth and we are needed, um, we've been needing it. I hope to see some good retail uh, go in there also. Um, but that's exactly what we've been trying to do with the activity centers grow there. And so I, uh, I think that I, I would personally, I'm vote for it so because I don't see so any reason yes. why not to. You're, you're a yes. Okay. <laughs> Member Burke. Uh, I to traffic and safety for the high school kids who uh, would frequent those facilities. Okay, that's a yes. That's Who's a next? Yes. Member Munoz. 
Yes, okay. <clears throat> I got just a few comments. Uh, one regarding the comments that the public made. Um, despite this is commercial residential or something like that, traffic is not something that needs to be too much of the concern because you, um, th this is important and everybody understand that before this uh, project has been approved, those uh, items have been taken in consideration. So no matter what you build over there, you're gonna have an increase on traffic. Um, these kind of restaurants are not like a peak hour, like seven in the morning, all the restaurant falls or all the drive through falls and everything. So even though this is a calculation based on, on some uh, formulas, uh, it doesn't guarantee that it's gonna be full. So I kind of say that people that are living around is don't need to be worried too much about like the impact on traffic. That's my, my perception. So saying so, uh, passing the traffic that and the impact on the properties, I don't think there's gonna be even a big impact on the property. So I'm in favor to approve because I don't see anything that is against the, the, so the standards. So you're in favor? In favor, you're yes. yes, okay. Alternate Rodriguez. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna vote in favor of this and um, a couple of things, first of all, is the property owners have a right to ask for rezoning. And second, this will add revenues to the city of El Tono, which are need, needed badly. Thank you. Okay, that's a yes, thank you. Um, Secretary Pfeffer. We, um, we approved some large projects for employment in that area. We did. And in order to balance it. We also need restaurants. Um, you know, I, rather than just have a huge lot of food trucks. So I mean, I, I'm voting yes for this. Okay, that's a yes, thank you. Vi Vice Chair Strozik. I vote yes on this project. I believe this is gonna attract one of them bigger restaurants that we want in that neighborhood. You start building smaller things, other places, people are smart, they're gonna put a bigger restaurant. They're gonna see the income you know, the, the possibilities that there's gonna be there. I would hope that the builders would work with this young lady about her fence. I mean, it's a five foot fence, she gets some privacy. I would hope that you'd volunteer to put up an eight fence, foot fence in her yard. I mean, that's kinda, it'd be nice of y'all. I mean, I, it's not that hard to ask, but I would, I would also hope you work with the county to fix and address the crosswalk issues there. There is a high school across the street. I'll keep all my opinions on that, but they're old, they should be old enough to watch for cars too, so. But I understand that area. I understand that whole section. There's gonna be a lot of building. I actually do believe once you build this, we're going sooner or later gonna attract a restaurant, a bigger place, and we all know we're tired of eating at Taco Bell. I'm glad there's gonna be some new places. I'm more than happy, so I am a yes. We have a yes. Chair Northy. Okay, um, I'm going to be a yes because I believe it meets all the criteria of the comprehensive plan and the changes so for the zoning with with the stipulation that, and I trust you, Mr. Watts, that you will do this, that the safety issues will be addressed, the concerns that we have with that will be addressed. Um, I, I, if, we, if there's any way that the county will allow you to widen sidewalks in that area, that would be particularly helpful as well. And um, I just wanna, just because you will appreciate this, Mark. When I first ran for public office, it was 1992. <laughs> and, and I ran on, this was one of the items, was that it was, that we needed to do a development that was an activity center and it needed to be developed. And, and our, our old friend, God rest his soul, Herky Huffman, and I had conversations about exactly what you're talking about, putting the plots together and how that was a problem for developing that center. So kudos that we are finding ways to combine stuff to make that happen because that is exactly what that activity center was expected to be. So Herky's looking down at us and he's happy. So I vote yes and that means we have a unanimous 7-0 vote for that. Madam uh, Attorney, is there anything else on this particular item that we need to do? No, other than I think y'all have done a great job this evening in the way the board has handled the case. Okay, great. 
<laughs> okay. Yeah. Get with her fence. Yeah, the fence. Her March. fence. The fence. Okay, we'll go to staff comments. Are there any staff comments? Uh, uh, no, madam, no, ma'am, ma ma madam chair. <laughs> Okay, and I just I just have um, we'll go to board comments. Is there any board comments coming? We'll start with you, Mr. Her Not for me, Mr. Rodriguez. Not for me. No. None for me. No. 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 Okay, no, I have one I got, comment, and I'm going to ask the. <laughs> I got. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I missed you. I know you always ignore me, but it's okay. <laughs> I used to. To eat. <laughs> it's just a comment, and that. I don't know if I'm right or wrong, just correct me. Uh, when we get the attachments in here, we get the, all the attachments for the reports and that, so, so, so. It is possible that can also you attach the letter you send to the neighbors when mm. we got these kind of meetings, like what you notify them, how they get access to the information. Because sometimes when they ask questions, it's kind of like maybe they didn't have the information or maybe they didn't research properly. So it's, it's good to know what, what they get being informed. That's it. It's like add those, uh, that letter that you submit to every yes, neighbor. We can do that. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's, not, that's a good suggestion. Good suggestion. Well, I have one, one request, and I don't know how to, where, where we go for this, but um, it would be really helpful if like the city commission when they're here and they have, and you all do iPads for them with the agenda and everything. Well, who do I need to ask? Do I need to come to the city commission? Because well, I'm telling you, the, this is nice, but mm -hmm. it is really, if we could have the presentation in front of us, if we could have, mm -hmm. I, I, I did too, but trying to follow, yeah. I didn't have his presentation. It, I didn't we have did Mark's. ask. Yeah. Didn't we? But it's not in the budget, is what it? What about access to yeah. the Wi-Fi? It's not in the budget. We've asked, but well, I'm going to ask. Okay, just that's just fine. I'm put that but in the record that I'm going to ask. Yeah. I've already we both did to we the both mayor. Asked. Madam Chair, just wait until after the election. I'll make sure you get some. Thank you, thank you. You heard. Promise, okay. promise, With that, promise. We, we are first. adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody.